I've got a couple other bows here. I'm going to pull up a few as we go here. Now let's talk about axle to axle length. This is another thing that really has come on as a, a trend, let's say, uh, in, in modern bow design. People like short bows. And there's no, really no physical argument for it. You know, I mean, are we so weak now that we can't carry an extra half a pound to the tree stand? You know, I mean, where are we walking like 50 miles to our stands now? You know, I'm, I'm a little bit sarcastic about, you know, the weight and the shortness of bows. But at the same time, you know, I know people like portable bows. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue. But purely from the physics standpoint, the longer the bow is and the more it weighs, the more stable it is. You know, you can't move it as quickly. It's the inertia. You know, the heavy bow, you can't just jerk it around and you can't twist it real fast. You know, a longer bow, it's like taking, you know, which is easier to move quickly. You know, a short uh, rolling pin, let's say, that weighs four pounds, or a long fence post that's six or seven feet long that weighs four pounds. You know, they weigh the same, but the longer object is a lot harder to move quickly because of the rotational inertia or the inertia of the body. Uh, same thing with a bow. You know, for any given weight of a bow, the longer it is, the more stable it's going to be. And the more it weighs, the harder it is to accelerate it by moving it quickly. So, you know, you take it as far as you want to. You know, for me, you know, I'm, I'm a realist, I guess. You know, I know that people aren't going to want to shoot longer bows and heavier bows anymore. Uh, but, you know, from a purely a physics standpoint, a longer bow is going to be a more stable bow.